Hello, and welcome once again to Home Bible Study. From my home to your home, this is Robert Holler, thanking you for taking the time to observe this video. And always to all of you that subscribe, view, comment, and respond. A heartfelt thank you. Today's lesson, ladies and gentlemen, Deliverance out of the mouth of the lion. Now, this might seem quite a uh, concerning topic to some people. Other ones might just blow it off as a lot of nothing. But we're going to look at it from Scripture. And you're going to find something very interesting, again, from Scripture, what this really means and how it goes about happening in those people that are actually in, if you will, the mouth of the lion. And it all has to do with the fall of mankind and then salvation by grace through faith. Now, we can look back all the way, starting in Genesis chapter 3, verse 5, when the serpent told the woman a great lie. Something was born besides the knowledge of good and evil. It's a word today that is amplified even more than it was back then in Genesis chapter 3, verse 5, which caused the fall of mankind altogether throughout all of history. That in itself is quite traumatic, if you will. Um, but in today's world, the same thing that was a lie back then has turned into something that the world looks at as propaganda. It's one and the same thing. And it's used all the time today in the world, especially in the world of information, uh, whether it's on social media, whether it's your main local uh, news, multimedias of the world, whatever it is, any platform, it is full of propaganda or lies. It is the same thing. There's no difference between lies and propaganda. And Satan has used this tool of his or device of his throughout his existence as when he was in, came into the world to rule the world as the God of this world. It's been one of his most powerful tools, and he's using it more now than he ever has in the past. And what happens to people is they end up believing this lie because they're born under a lie. They're born with knowledge of good and evil in them. They have no spirit of Jesus Christ in them when they're born in the human state, in the flesh. They have only the body and the soul and the knowledge of good and evil in them. And that good and evil is based fully on a lie. So with that being said, let's start to look in Scripture in some places where you might have an idea of what we're talking about here when it comes to um, the great lie. Now, one of the places we're going to start off is in the book of Ezekiel. Now, those that are born under a lie and have the knowledge of good and evil in them and do not have the spirit of Jesus Christ dwelling within them are easily and can be devoured by the lion. But right now, for sure, they are in the grasp of the lion's teeth. Because we're going to look at something here in Ezekiel. And we're going to start in Ezekiel chapter 17, ladies and gentlemen. Excuse me, chapter 18. Now, it's an emphasis because it's mentioned twice in the same chapter. Let's look and see what verse 4 says in uh, chapter 18 of the book of Ezekiel. Verse 4 says, Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Look what it says in verse 20 now. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity, and the son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. Neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteous, righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. <clears throat> Now let's go to the book of Proverbs, ladies and gentlemen. It's very interesting because in the book of Proverbs, there's a verse that is also mentioned twice within the same books. Not in the same chapter, 
but in the same book. So back up in your Bible to the book of Proverbs. And we're going to look at the Proverbs. I think it's chapter 14 is the first one. Let's see if we can find it rather quickly here. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 14, verse 12, this is what it says. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Now, staying in the book of Proverbs, go to chapter 16. Go to chapter 16 of the book of Proverbs, and let's look at verse 25. This is what it says. Verse 25, chapter 16 of Proverbs says, There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Well, we just read in Ezekiel, twice in one chapter actually, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Now here we talked about and, and read that there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Now let's continue on get into more modern writings, if you will, in Scripture, uh, in the book of Corinthians. And let's see what it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, starting in verse 18. Verse 18 says, Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him be Come a fool, that he may be wise. Verse 19, For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And verse 20, And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are in vain. Now let's continue on a little bit further in the book of Corinthians. And let's back up in the book of 1 Corinthians to chapter 2. And let's look what it says. We'll start in verse 5, verse five of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 5. And that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but of the power of God. Verse 6. Howbeit, we speak wisdom amongst them that are perfect or complete, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. Verse 7, But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even hidden, hidden mystery which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Verse 8, Which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. And then let's... Uh, Finish here in uh, the book of Corinthians, chapter 8. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, chapter 8, ladies and gentlemen. And I want to show you chapter 8, verse 2 of 1 Corinthians. Chapter 8, verse 2 of 1 Corinthians says, And if any man think he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet, as he ought to know. Now, what we're looking at here through Scripture is all of the flesh of mankind, of the natural man, if you will, where he relies on his own wisdom. He relies on the wisdom of the world, and he relies on the wisdom that the spirit of this world can give him, who is Satan. And we see the consequences of that belief system or of that ideology the mankind in his own finite mind and finite wisdom believed the lie in Genesis chapter 3, verse 5, that he was going to be as God's. Look what happened. It says, the soul that sinneth, it shall surely die. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Then we find out in Scripture that the wages of sin is death. And then we find out the natural man is under a lie constantly. He knows no other way of saying things. And it's apparent in this world today, ladies and gentlemen. This lion we're talking about is the great lion of Scripture that I'm going to show you the verse 
just means the lion. It doesn't mean anything else in Scripture. So don't try and come up with some kind of a analogy of your own that you think it has a lot greater meaning than what Scripture says it is. In Scripture, it is pronounced Leon. It's spelled L-E-O-N. Leon means lion. Now, if one needs to be delivered from the lion, what do you need to be delivered from? Now, we're showing you from Scripture what you need to be delivered from. Because if you're not, you shall surely die. And the, you, the ways that you think are right are only the ways of death, because the wages of sin is death. And we know from Romans chapter 5, verse 12, that by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and death passed on to all men, for all have sinned. So it's something that is very natural that comes to mankind. That's why propaganda today in this world is thriving. They cannot tell the truth. And you're looking at world leaders today that are so entangled within the mouth of the lion, there is no escape for them because they cannot tell you the truth. There's only one truth that exists, and it's not the truth in this world. What exists in this world that mankind and his religions, to include Christianity, tell you is the truth is nothing more than a great lie. It all is predicated on the natural man of the flesh, who is incapable of telling the truth of Scripture. Now the truth of Almighty God in the Spirit, he cannot do because he cannot receive the truth of the Word of God. See, it is foolishness unto him. He is hidden from him. His mind is blinded to it. He has never been given over to the repentance, to the acknowledging of the truth from Scripture, and he is held captive by Satan at Satan's will. This is all scriptural. And you see it today, and you wonder why is everything going the way it is? Why cannot we believe it? Why do we have to watch 6,000 podcasts, 3,000 telling you one side of the story, and 3,000 telling you another side of the story? And then you sit in the middle and make up your mind. I watch these videos for the simple reason of knowing the truth of Scripture and try to relate it and show you what mankind is doing on either side that they think they're right, see? And that's what lies do. That's what propaganda does, and that's what Satan does. It divides. And it causes splits, it causes anger, it causes fighting, it causes division, it causes confusion. And you look at your religion of Christianity, it's no different with them. They do the very same thing in their doctrines, in their man-made schools of theology, in their denominations, and all their splitting. Even when Christianity as a religion was founded back in around 300 AD, it was founded on the premise of mankind's ideology, his finite mind and finite wisdom based on a lie from Satan. The propaganda has always been there. It is just used in a different way today than it has in the past and is more readily available because everybody has the news of the world at their fingertips. All they have to do is turn the switch. And you can watch any place in the world, anything you almost want to. But you have to remember, it's all being controlled. So what is the truth? There is no truth in this world, ladies and gentlemen, because this world is ruled by the God of this world, who is Satan, who rules like a lion. And those people, all of the natural man of this world, there's 8 billion people plus in this world, and the majority of them are, are under the grip or in the teeth of the great lion, which is of the great lie. Because they do not know, they do not promote, they do not understand, they cannot receive the truth which comes from God Almighty, the creator of all things, Jesus Christ in the spirit. It doesn't come in the flesh. That's the big problem with today. And I'll give you references for all those places I talked about where the mind is blinded, where they are no longer able to recover themselves out of the snare of the devil because God has not given them over to repentance unto the acknowledging of the truth. I will give you those scriptures to look up. I gave you the other ones that talked about what mankind does with his finite mind and finite wisdom and where it's going to lead him. And it's all going to be death. And we're talking about not only the physical death, but the spiritual death. You see, mankind in his natural state has never experienced a spiritual death. He has no clue what that is because he has no spirit within him. 
Once he's going to find out what the spiritual death is, and he will find out in the lake of fire and the second death, it's something he'll never be able to handle. It is that traumatic. It is that powerful of a separation of God from them, which was never meant to be because in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, but he also created man in his own image, which was in the spirit not in the flesh. And mankind and the propaganda still go on to promote this crap about being in the form of God when they're talking about what's going on, like say in the Middle East when people are killing each other, when, my goodness, we're all made in the image of God. What a bunch of blasphemy. What a wrong doctrine to teach. What propaganda. What great lies. And Jesus told his followers, actually, he told those that opposed him, which were the Pharisees, scribes, and Sadducees, the religious leaders of Israel of that day during his earthly ministry in the gospel of the kingdom, they opposed Jesus Christ. Why? Because Jesus Christ came teaching the truth, something that was contrary to what they believed was their truth, what they made out to be their truth. Jesus bluntly told them, you are of your father, the devil. You are telling the lies, and your father is the father of lies, being making you of your father, the devil. It cost him his physical life because he stood and told the truth. Paul the Apostle is no different. Paul the Apostle stood for the truth of what? The truth of the word of God in Jesus Christ in Scripture from the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ according to the preaching of Jesus Christ from Scripture in the Spirit. And I'm going to show you what happened to Paul or what he said it was very profound towards the end of his life when he wrote his very last letter to his disciple, Timothy. Now, if you open your Bibles, I want you to look at the book of 2 Timothy, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go to the book of 2 Timothy. One of the last, it is the last epistle that Paul wrote before he was executed. Now, this is Paul writing to his beloved Timothy, his son, as he called him. Open your Bibles to the last chapter of 2 Timothy, chapter 4. Now he's talking here to Timothy, and he wants him to remember something. But he's going to tell you something very important. I'm going to start in verse 16. And this is why when you stand for the truth, when you proclaim the truth, not the truth of this world, but the truth of the word of God in Scripture from the Jesus Christ in the Spirit, this will happen to you also. We're going to start in verse 16. At my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me or forsaken me. I pray, God, that it may not be laid to their charge. Verse 17, notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known, and that the Gentiles might hear, and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Paul had to be delivered out of the mouth of the lion. The lion opposed everything that stands for the truth in this setting of Scripture. And you see this happening in the world today. If you take a stand and teach the Word of God according to the Scriptures now, according to the revelation of the mystery, where you teach and preach the word of God and study it the way Jesus Christ commands you to, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, where he said, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And then he says also, in the same place, and I don't want to paraphrase it, because I don't use it that much, but in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 16, he says, But shun profane and vain babbling, 
for they will increase unto more ungodliness. You're fighting the lies of Satan. You're fighting the devices of Satan. You're fighting the natural man of the flesh. Because Jesus even said in this earthly ministry, what good is it if you inherit the whole world and lose your soul? What will you give in the return for your soul? And then Paul goes on to say in verse uh, in Galatians chapter 4, verse 16, for, I, for have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? And I've said this many times in my studies, I would rather become your enemy and tell you the truth than to become your friend and lie to you to get you to like me and tell you what it is I think you want to hear. Because it's always going to be a lie. You'll never find in the teachings of my videos where I will tell you, well, this is what I think it says. This is what I supposing it says. This is what they're, this is what scripture is trying to tell you. I never say that. I let scripture teach scripture. I let Jesus Christ in the spirit show you the word of God in truth. What you do with it, that is entirely up to you. Now, predominantly, if we separate the world into the religious section or sector and then the political sector or the governmental ruling sector, there's a lot of intertwining in both of them. So it's very hard to separate them. But let's look at a religion like Christianity and those professing Christians. Christianity absolutely feeds the lion. Now I want you to think about that for just a moment. Christianity literally feeds the lion, because Christianity is based on a lie. Christianity is a false religion. Christianity is not of scripture. Christianity comes from the finite mind and finite wisdom of mankind with the help of Satan. And look how good it looks on the surface. Look how many people have been drawn in by this lie. And the reason they are, they were born under a lie. They cannot see the truth. They cannot understand the truth. Truth becomes the stench of death to them. To us that are saved by grace through faith, truth becomes the sweet savor of life in Jesus Christ. And their lies are exposed to us. We can see them for what they are. And we make them manifest. We make them known to the world what these lies are. And the difference between the truth of Scripture that is in the Spirit of God in Jesus Christ through the revelation of the mystery versus the lies which are of the natural man of the flesh and of the law in Scripture, because of what the Jews did to the commandments of God, they took his laws and they made them into their religion. They perverted, they twisted, and they contaminated it all with the sin of the flesh. And Jesus Christ abolished, fulfilled the law, abolished it on, on the cross. He became our curse of the law for us. Because it says, cursed is everyone that hangeth from a tree. That is abolished. It is no longer that we are under the yoke of bondage of the law because of what Jesus Christ did for us, and he showed us in the truth of his word from Scripture. We that are saved by grace through faith have been delivered out of the mouth of the lion before he had a chance to totally devour us. There is a beast that's coming. And he's a very bad, bad, bad beast, full of destruction. But there is a lion out there now that nobody talks about. They don't even mention in Scripture. It's mentioned in Scripture right in 2 Timothy. And it's only mentioned in one verse, pertaining to what Paul said. He had to be delivered by whom? Jesus Christ out of the mouth of the lion because his the truth that he stood for is what pulled him out of the great lies of the lion that holds people captive. Christians from Christianity have no chance of being delivered out of the mouth of the lion if they continue down the path of their religion of Christianity and to be professing Christians and to follow the doctrine of Christianity. They will never, ever be pulled out of the mouth of the lion. They will be eventually devoured by the lion completely. And they'll end up in hell, 
waiting on a great white throne judgment, and then in the very end being cast into the lake of fire forever once they stood at the great white throne judgment of Jesus Christ. That's the danger of this lion. That's the danger of the lie. And people don't understand it because it is a lion that Paul's talking about is of the spirit. It's not a physical lion. It goes around going roar. It's the kingdom of, king of the beasts, you know, king of the jungle with the big mane and all this kind of stuff that you see in what a real lion looks like. This is a spiritual lion. The one you cannot see, the one you cannot accept, the one you cannot understand because it is foolishness to you that are not saved by grace through faith. You that claim to be saved by grace through faith of your religion of Christianity, where you're born again, you're baptized, you're confirmed, you've done all these things that your church does, you've got, done all the uh, works that you're supposed to do, you attend a service, you tithe, you do the holy days, you do all the missionary work, gosh, you do everything that your religion tells you to do. You're slowly being devoured by this very lion that keeps growing. And you that bring in Christians into your religion that you think you're doing the work of God, see, by evangelizing people to come in and be a Christian of Christianity, being born again, do all these kind of things, that you'll have salvation. All you're doing is feeding that lion. And that lion is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and more powerful with each passing day. But there's going to come a time when the lion will be done away with. But the only chance you have today to be pulled out of the mouth of the lion, to be delivered from this lion of lies, is by the gospel of Jesus Christ by grace through faith, which is found in the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ, which is Paul's gospel according to the preaching of Jesus Christ from Romans through Philemon. That's the only hope you have. But again, it'll be given to you, but what you do with this is entirely up to you. Because I mentioned earlier about some references where I said the people of the natural man is blinded. He cannot see. That's in First Corinthians, uh, Second Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. Read them. And then the other one, uh, reference about being uh, repentant unto acknowledging the truth and the snare of the devil is found in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 25 and 26. Please read them. And then I mentioned earlier about how mankind in his natural state can never receive anything of the Spirit. He can only receive things of the Spirit of this world, who is of Satan, in the lies of the great lion. He cannot receive the gifts of God that are freely given in the Spirit because he does not believe in the wisdom of the Spirit. He believes in the wisdom that mankind teaches. We believe in the wisdom that the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things to spiritual. Mankind cannot do that because it is blinded to him. It is foolishness unto him, and it is hidden unto him. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 15, 13, no, 12, 13, and 14. Please read them. And you're going to find out something. And you're going to find out what Paul said. But let's hope you find out before it's too late. Because if you go by what, and find out what Paul said, you don't want to be standing, suffering in hell, waiting on the great white throne judgment, being pulled up to the great white throne judgment to be judged by Jesus Christ when Jesus Christ will simply tell you, you were warned. You were warned in the, second, in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 17. And he's going to read you and say, Now withstanding the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known, that all the Gentiles might hear, that I was delivered, and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion, which you will not be, because you believed in your religion, see? You're very comfortable that you don't have to study. All you have to do is go to your local assembly once a week or once a month, however you, many times you do, and you hear what you think is the word of God in truth from the pastor that stands at the pulpit, thinking he's a man of God. Well, he's a man of God, all right. He's a man of God with a small g. He is of Satan. He doesn't have a clue either. That's the power of the great lion. That is the strength that the lion has, that has everybody in the snare of the devil. It's unavoidable. It's inescapable for those that choose to believe not. And that all can be changed. 
That can be changed in the twinkling of an eye. All you need to do is hear the gospel of Jesus Christ that can save you and deliver you out of the mouth of the lion because you will then stand for the truth. As long as you stand for the lie, you're going to be devoured by the lion. It is when you stand for the truth that you will be fought against hard by this lion. And it's a constant battle. But you'll never give up because you have the truth of the word of God. You have the armor that God gave you to fight the wiles of the devil. And you never will be ever again under the yoke of bondage, which is the law and your religion and the snare of the devil and in the grasp of this great lion's teeth. You will never be there. But those of you that choose not to are already there. You just can't feel the bite yet. When you feel the bite and you take your last breath, then it's too late. Where is this gospel that can save you? It's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. It is found in the writings of Paul's gospels that he was given to him in the spirit by Jesus Christ through the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ, of his preaching of the revelation of the mystery which was formed before, which was kept hidden before the foundation of the world, but now is being manifested and being made known through the prophets and the scriptures by the to all nations by the everlasting God for the obedience of faith. That's verse 26 of uh, uh, Romans chapter 16. And in that gospel, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1, it says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand. Verse 2, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory that which was preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. Verse 3, for I delivered first of all unto you that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And verse 4, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now you believe that by faith through grace. Because it says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, for by grace are ye saved through faith, yet not of yourselves. It's a gift of God. In verse 9, not of works, lest any man should boast. You're never going to have to fear to be devoured by the lion or the great lies and device of Satan called propaganda of this world. That lion is bigger now than he ever has been, is more powerful than he's ever has been, and he's growing every day and devouring so many people along the way. The number is going to end up to be insurmountable. But again, the choice is yours. What, you, what I've given you, you can do with it, whatever you want. It'll be your choice, ladies and gentlemen. I just pray again that you will make the right choice. And I'm going to leave you with this last scripture found in the book of Galatians. Chapter 2, verse 20. It's one of my favorite verses. I love them all, but this is one of my favorites. Verse 20 says, I was crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I lived. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And now, in the life now that I live, in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. You see, I have the Spirit of Jesus Christ dwelling within me, which I never had before I was saved by grace through faith. The truth is in me, not because of anything I did or anything of my abilities. It is all because of the truth of Jesus Christ that dwells within me, shows me his truth through the Spirit that I can freely accept and see as a free gift from God. Because I fully understand it. My mind is not blinded. Jesus Christ has shined his light on into me. I've been given repentance unto the acknowledgement of the truth by God himself. And I was able to pull myself out of the snare of the devil who has held me captive by his will all this time. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate your listening. It's home Bible study. My home to your home. This is Robert Haller. Thank you for taking the time to observe this video. And always remember, ladies and gentlemen, good Lord willing, until next time.